are back with the lovely Victoria Lorian Fabish. Thank you so much. This so glad to be here again. Oh. You're a second timer. I'm a second timer. It's uh, always great to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, you look lovely. I always like looking at your. You've got such a vibrant glow about it. I think, you know, it takes one to know one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So much has happened yeah. uh, in the few weeks since I last saw you, yeah. which was your workshop on uh, depression and anxiety. It was yeah. very eye-opening. Learned you. a lot. Good. And even more uh, was reading this book that you uh, put together, Find Your Self-Culture, Moving from Depression and Anxiety uh, to Monumental Self-Acceptance. This was such a you liked big it? changer for me. Yeah, I oh, really wow. did. I really liked it. That's um, great. And the, the two things that resonated with me when yeah. I read this was um, learning to help yourself, learning to spend time with yourself, having self dates. And when your cup is full and when it trickles over, that's when you can give away all your other good stuff. But you have to take care of your good stuff first. You gotta fill yourself first. You have to fill yourself first. And yeah. I realized for many years I was going through, going about my business with my cup, it was like, self, it was like half, half full. It wasn't completely full. It was a little bit empty. It was a little bit empty, yeah. you know, and, and then trying to, you know, muster up the energy to give it away. It was, it was very draining. I can imagine. So um, now to reprioritize is just a wonderful thing because now I'm I so feel glad fulfilled. you're doing this. This is great. Thank you, thank you. But it took me, you know, for some odd years to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but now that I have, it's like wow, woo! New I take vitality. myself to the movies. I do things by myself. But uh, before I used to think, oh, yeesh, you know, they're going to think I'm, you know, kind of a loser doing things by myself. But you know, self activities are great. Yeah, so the family culture that we come from sometimes determines uh, it's not okay to uh, be selfie. It's not okay to be selfie. Selfie, and that, yeah. That's the thing you brought up in the book, selfie versus selfish. What is selfie that? Selfie versus selfish. So selfish is often, you know, acting without regard for other people. But selfie, it's sort of a made-up word with a Y as opposed to an IE, the kids taking selfies. But <laughs> selfie is very much, you know, having your own voice, your own feelings, your own sense of intuitive self-knowing being the most important piece. And the most important, the, mo the loudest thing that you listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, essentially, if you're hearing everybody else's opinion, everybody else's needs, you're essentially gonna be coming to the table resentful. And that's what I see, a lot of people coming to the table resentful, which often resentment turn inward is depression, you know, uh, anxiety, because I believe that anxiety is emotions unspoken in mm -hmm. many ways, mm -hmm. and then a nervous system disconnect. Right. Uh, so this is, this is selfiness is, is the key to, to real uh, transformation and creating self-culture, which is obviously what my book is about, yeah. self-culture. Wonderful, wonderful book. And it's very Thank you. transformational for many people and, and uh, myself as a A lot of people liking it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I really yeah. am. It's, it's, sort of a, it's sort of a wave that's happening. And where can people find the book? So on my website is the best place to get it. It's uh, self-culture.com, mm -hmm. self-culture.com. And you can also get it at Book City and at Seekers in Toronto. But if people are sort of all over the country or all over the province, mm -hmm. definitely come because we've got a situation where we're not doing any shipping and handling costs. Okay. We're just doing the book cost. So and that is great. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's sort of a gift. No surprises. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's just the book. That's just it. The book. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before in our last chat that depression and anxiety are at an all-time high. Um, do men and women differ in the way they deal with depression? Yeah, I find that men will come in lethargic, unmotivated, irritable, angry. Women will come in depressive, sad, emotional, uh, also irritable, you know, also <laughs> irritable. Uh, I find the, the, the weather, I find that, you know, it's, it's ridiculous to complain about the weather because we can't control it. Right. But the reality is, is that it is affecting people. It this is a people. tough winter and it is affecting people. Right. And I'm finding that my office is extremely busy because of that. Mm -hmm. People are finding their uh, ability to be motivated, their ability to be sparkly about life, positive about life, yeah. is really, it's, it's dragging down. It's a challenge down. It's now. a challenge, yeah, it's yeah. a challenge. So, I mean, you know, I, I, what I talk to people about is, is, you know, 
finding ways to only deal with the things that you can control, which you cannot control the weather, mm -hmm. but what you can control is, and even that's hard, but you can control how you think, your attitude. Um, I'm, I'm very much a fan of, you know, dialoguing with the concrete thoughts that are saying, I'm not good enough, or it's never going to be good for me, or mm -hmm. I always don't win. Whatever those concrete things you've inherited or learned, you got to dialogue, you got to, you got to chisel. I mean, the picture on my book really says it. It's a picture of a woman chiseling through concrete. So you got to really chisel through the concretized thinking way mm -hmm. of looking at life if yeah. it's not serving you, obviously. Right, shutting off the internal noise. That's that right. Serving and you. really, really working with yourself and catching yourself in the middle of a negative, uh, uh, self critical, self judgmental thought. You got to go, oh, I'm, I'm doing that. You, don't just let it happen. Notice when you're doing it. Now, I was listening to someone the other day and um, she brought up the fact that we have about 75% uh, of our thoughts are negative on a daily basis. Would you agree with that? Is it high? I think, yes. Un, un, Unworked on, unworked on, unanalyzed. We tend to have uh, an experience where we're operating from the ego, and the ego is very much fear-driven. Mm -hmm. But when I talk about operating from the, the ego versus the soul, you know, our soul is much more trusting, much more faith-driven, much more relaxed, much more present-day, present-moment oriented. Right. The ego is very past-driven, future-worry-driven. Mm -hmm. It's usually the child, the hurt child, right. you know, running the show, the, the, the child that didn't get what it needed. So that is the, if that is not looked at, analyzed, worked on that will be the default setting of how the mind works okay and that's something you spoke about is the inner bully absolutely we spoke about the inner bully and not only the inner bully but the inner the inner um, torturer <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that that part of us that doesn't say we deserve to be joyful happy evolved and moving forward so and in our life purpose and, and that's the the socialized guilt we've had from family culture that's from right our that's right that's yeah. right okay. and you know and I find that when we don't have great environments like uh, for example there's poverty or bad weather or illness mm -hmm. these things are much easier to sort of really really fertilize and grow okay you've got a workshop coming up yeah. the ultimate holistic anti-anxiety workshop. workshop and it's a day-long workshop I'm going to be talking about the sources of anxiety, and really proven tools that I work with every single day in the office to transform the mind, mm -hmm. transform the way a person looks at themselves and at life, and really working with neural pathways to rewire the brain. It's a full day workshop. It's, it's extremely well priced. We're doing it for $80 because we want a lot of people to come. Yeah. And uh, we're doing the free intro evening so the actual workshop is the 9th of March okay. uh, on the Sunday, and the free sort of intro evening is on the 6th of March, the Thursday, around 7 o'clock. Fantastic. Where is it going to be? It's at DuPont and Bathurst at this Ayurvedic, uh, really fantastic Ayurvedic yeah, uh, beautiful. clinic. Exactly. Yeah. And on my website, www.self-culture.com, registration is right on the website. Okay, so that's March 9th. Yes, and coming up. It's about a 10.30 to 4.30 day, so it's exactly. a full day. It's a full day. We'll have a little lunch in between. But, you know, what I want people to know is that this workshop is an opportunity to, you know, work with me because I'm in my office doing this every single day, but this is, I'm just sort of really giving away the, the information on how to specifically deal with anxiety from a, an emotional perspective, from a thinking perspective and where the sources of it are and some supplementation to help with it. Right. And, uh, and it, it's, it's very transformational. I can't wait to go. Oh, uh, good. And I'll be there. All right. Supporting you. It was a, a wonderful time last time and I, I really encourage everyone to, to get involved in Thank this you. workshop. It really is transformational. It'll be helpful. Thank you so much for joining me again. Come back anytime. It's I want to. Having you here. Uh, we'll talk about relationships next time. Relationships. How about that? Do you want to talk about relationships? Yeah, let's talk about relationships. <laughs> You're yeah. going to help me with my dating process because I am not winning. Well, this is a challenge I don't understand me. this though, Nikki. I don't. I, I don't we need understand to talk, it either. We need to talk about how to navigate through new relationships. Okay. And also a big, big thing that's going on right now is, not right now, but you know, commitment phobia. People are commitment phobic. Oh, I've been meeting a lot of those. Got to talk about that. <laughs> got to work. Got to work with that. Got to work with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna hold my hand through that because I'm not getting it. Absolutely. I think it's harder too for women 
you of, were a spectacular of my, of my woman. maturity finding. Uh, oh, you were a spectacular woman. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Can you tell the commitment phobes that? We don't no, run <laughs> from the commitment phobes. Don't get involved with commitment phobes. <laughs> All right. It's always a joy. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with some more good stuff. All right. to the Nikki Clark Show here at the Hard Rock Cafe. And we have the beautiful founder of EVAM, mother of two and motivational speaker, Charmaine Lover in here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> now, I gotta say this. Do you get that you look like Meg Ryan like yeah. every day? <laughs> every day. Every, every day. day since I've been in high school, so a very long time, yeah. 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 You're going I'll to take meet it. her. I'll take it. I will meet her. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that for you. Yeah. 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 But tell me about so, your background. Uh, well, I, I was raised in a, like East Ontario towards Balbo Trenton area and uh, came to Oakville and studied in, in school there. And I'm an artist behind. And so I studied their art and uh, came to Toronto and did some modeling and opened up a company in marketing. And now I've switched careers and in coaching. So. Yeah. Now my first job, mom, first and foremost. Isn't it great? Oh, it's the purpose. It's the purpose of life. And you have a boy and a girl. Girl, boy. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. how old are they? Uh, my daughter is 12, turning 13, or 15. Between. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my son is 11. Yeah. yeah. It's wow. like, well, enjoy them at this age. Oh, I, I, it, they stop my world. They're my breath. They're my leaders. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have three too. Like they're know. they're adults, mm -hmm. so now it's that you know you have to give them a little room yeah. to be independent and self sufficient. I know. But I remember the time when they were really little. We were, they were just like right under my wing. Everything is so playful and yeah. and just uh, comes from nothing and just, just curious and engaged and always new. So I like that perspective. And so honest and very, funny. Very honest. Yeah. Just forthright. It's really great. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. When um when I first heard you speak, mm -hmm. it was at uh, Mo Mondays, mm -hmm. uh, and right here, mm -hmm. Hard Rock, mm -hmm. last month, and you really, really moved me, really touched mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and I thought I I'm going to take a chance. Wow. All she could say is no, but I'd like to invite her on the show wow, because really. you spoke about something that resonated with me so strongly mm -hmm. about being transparent, mm -hmm. and you said something so amazing that being vulnerable is powerful. Why is it powerful? I often say it's like a superhero trait. And um, I think when you can come, I think honest, I think my children give me this, this take on being vulnerable all the time because um, when you can come from a, a place of, of really just nothing, like, um, in a situation where um, without making things up for people and assuming things and like being skeptical and, and just being more curiously engaged and really vulnerable, it really does um, create a, 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 a oneness with people and, and just more understanding and positive way to go through things as much as we like it or not sometimes. So, yeah. yeah. As, as scary it, as it can be in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once you let go. Yeah, it's once, okay, you, isn't once it? you let go, because like yeah. it's easy to hang on, it's safer to hang on, and it's and when you come from a background in the work that I do do, it's 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 really just safe to keep guarded and protected, mm -hmm. and but I think being vulnerable has gotten me to really great places. Yeah, yeah, it, taking the risk the has risk, gotten you so much more. The risk is the greatest teaching. I feel like when I'm ever, whenever I'm confronted now or challenged that I feel like, okay, God, it's like, this is, this, what do you got to say? What do you got to say? What is it that, that I, I don't like the situation, but I'll be with it and, and uh, you surrender give, to it. give me, give me what it is that you're trying yeah. to give me here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do that quite a bit too. Mm. I ask myself, okay, what is it? And yeah. I surrender. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, it's, it actually works out okay once, yeah. you, once you do that. Yeah. Now you have spearheaded EVAM, mm. and what is that the acronym for? 
It stands for Empowering Voices Awareness, and it's inside the month uh, we're targeting for bullying uh, for our middle schools. And uh, it came, it launched at the police college uh, in support of the gatehouse. Uh, they have a conference that they do annually called uh, Transforming Trauma into Triumph. And uh, it started there last year, and uh, we've got a lot of amazing support uh, from all areas of social services, child care services, police, and it really, what it is, it's intentional, it's an intentional program to help parents, teachers, and students empower their voices around abuse and neglect. Because there just really isn't a sustainable, uh, confident program that's available for those three areas, for, for everyone to identify, educate, and empower themselves around. So we're looking to... How long has this been? It's been, a, no. it's, it's been a year uh, putting it all together, mm -hmm. but right now we're working with Humber College to put, facilita put facilitators in place mm -hmm. so that we can uh, go into the schools with facilitators and, and uh, facilitate groups of parents, groups of teachers, and groups of students on this okay. neglect and abuse. This is, this it's all kinds of abuse, sexual, physical, mental, mm -hmm. everything that we're faced with. Everything that we're faced with. Mm. That is amazing mm. how the moment you decided to let go has led to this. Absolutely. Moment. When did Absolutely. that happen? Um, it was it was lots of healing, lots of um, um, being with great people, and and not committed to being stuck in the victim. Um, I was a I would grew up on an adult timetable of uh, being sexually groomed with uh, three men in my family and and uh, physically abused uh, in my family and bullied throughout school. So it was a pretty crazy um, life from 5 to 15. And, and uh, um, at the end of it all, I was really, really committed to just um, making a difference for those who go through the same thing. And uh, I find that in teenagers today with high schools, <clears throat> Uh, Bell Talks has put on that uh, mental illness campaign and, and uh, dealing with anxiety and depression. That mm -hmm. if we hit middle school, if we go further, we, we I think anxiety and depression and bullying mm -hmm. are products of something that's happening mm -hmm. uh, in some kind of neglect. Because we as parents are so busy with our lives that even just the simplest form of neglect can can cause anxiety and depression, yes. can cause a sense of behavior that... A disconnection. Right? <clears throat> So that's where it's all going. Okay. I'm so proud Still of it. Still got to be vetted with the TDSB, but uh, we're hoping to have, some, have that push pull forward uh, in the next year or two. But it's always a lengthy progress because this is a topic where people don't want to talk about. It's uncomfortable, but it's, it's necessary. It's necessary, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And I'm so honored that you're here. Thank sharing. you for having me. Oh, more than welcome. It's really nice Come back to meet anytime. You. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's wonderful. And how can people find you if they want to get involved? Uh, they can definitely find me. I have a uh, coaching practice, uh, Ruthless Coaching. Ruthless Coaching, I yeah, like that name. Yeah, Ruthless Coaching, and it's ruthlesscoaching.com. And uh, Facebook, Charmaine Loverin, also too. I'm all, always open to have great conversations and meeting people. So now I want to do something for your birthday. I know you're putting oh, some money yeah, together for your birthday fund. It's coming up in May. Yeah, yeah thank I've, you. I've been doing a little bit of Facebook, wow. uh, you know, a little cyber spying. Yeah, good. So good. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'd like oh, to see really that. Oh, really great. I know it's been too grow long. to where you want it to oh, be. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> birthday dream. Birthday mm -hmm. dream. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. You're Nikki. welcome. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. We'll be right back. So, yeah. we gotta get up and dance. We're gonna make a house version. Yeah. <laughs> Tamron, thank you so much for joining me. It's an honor, Nikki, it really oh, is. Thank yeah. you, no, it's yeah. an honor having you here. And I, I love the fly leopard print, you understand. I love animal print. I know, and it's, it's a fantasy. It's a, it's a it's fantasy? A fantasy. Yeah. Speaking of fantasies, now you are the uh, owner of Tamron's Place, mm -hmm. an intimacy lounge for food, fun, and pleasure in Bell Fountain, Ontario, and you're also known as the sexual intimacy lifestyle expert. Ooh. Wowza. That's a mouthful, eh? That's a, <laughs> that's a mouthful. Yeah. Now, how did you become a sexual intimacy expert? That's an excellent question, Nikki, because to be honest, if you would have told me 10 years ago 
Tamron, this is what you're going to be doing. I would have said, you're absolutely crazy. No, that's not me. And I have no idea what that is. And I became the expert because um, I opened a store in Bell Fountain, Ontario about five years ago. And everybody thought I was crazy. And I opened like a raw food organic place in a very small town. That's not a crazy thing to do. Not in my mind. <laughs> but intuitively, I knew it was a stepping stone. And so I trusted my intuition. I went, this is where I am now, and I'm going to do it. And what happened was unbelievable. People would come in for the food, because I'm a foodie. I love to cook. I, I'm a mom. Um, I was raised on preparing food in the home. What do you like to cook? Pierogies. Pierogies? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's my favorite. Dill pickles. Like, I'm Ukrainian as well. So, oh, I mean, okay. I love all that, that good home-cooked food. But I was getting into raw food, and it was changing my life. Mm -hmm. But I love to make the food. And so people would come in and they would be like, oh my God, like there's magic in your food. And I said, well, you know, that's because I love to touch. To me, it's very healing. But also what happened was that people were coming in and especially a lot of men coming in and returning and saying, I felt amazing. Like, what was it? And I go, well, to be honest, the food we use here, if you understand food, because I had started to study herbs and homeopathy right. and that kind of stuff was that a lot of the ingredients I was using are true aphrodisiacs and it was just ah, fun for me to learn yes. um, and again it's going back into nature so in all of this happening also what happened was because I'm very easy to talk to people would come in and they'd start asking for advice and me just being a, a yeah oh yeah I can help you just read that book oh I love this book oh here here's my friend she does this and I had a stack of business cards in behind the counter and I was really genuinely helping people right. because I'm a people person mm -hmm. and I love people and so it was very easy for me right. and people would come back and say oh my god uh, my sex life got better my sex drive got better men would come in and go like I can't believe what you gave me I felt amazing and I go well because it is that simple we believe it has to be something other than, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so I found it was just phenomenal what was happening. And so I decided that maybe I needed to relook at my business. Right. And mm -hmm. so I hired some amazing business coaches. Mm -hmm. It took me longer than what I thought. And they said, if that is what's happening, then you need to step up, you need to own it, and you need to help people. And it was interesting because I felt that I had this responsibility because if people trust you with talking about sex, and I wasn't raised in an environment where my parents spoke to me about sex, mm -hmm. like I had the little neither. book. Oh, no. It was our generation. Yes. They didn't even know. I mean, they had sex for, you know, raising families, to, for kids to work on the farm. Like it was a different mentality, and that's where I came from. Mm -hmm. um, and so we learn in our own relationships and we learn through our life. But I went through a lot of dysfunction in my family as well. So after my marriage breakup, I realized, you know, I needed to learn more. And I didn't know at that time how repressed I actually was. Mm -hmm. And it was being in the dating field and back out there where I realized, oh my God, I have never really talked about stuff. And so as I was growing and changing, so were my clients. It was like a metamorphosis that was going on. So the more I learned about myself, I was sharing with others. Right. And so I had to come up with that title. And I went, I'm not a sex expert, but I love to read books and I love to learn more. So people come to me for advice. They trust me. They've probably, most people, I'll be honest, have never told a soul what they tell me. I'd be standing behind the counter making smoothies <laughs> and people would be blurting out stuff like I had this happen and everybody would be like, hey, don't worry. It's just another day. Like, that's what happens in my store. Well, I think you, you have a special calling. I do. Um, and you have that, that aura about you that makes people feel at ease exactly. to talk about their fantasies. And I don't think too many people can say oh, they have a person like that in their life. So exactly. you were that person. I am that person. And, yeah. uh, and so a lot came with it, and I realized I have it. to do something. I had to do something. So that's why I said if I would have known or people would have told me that, I'd be like, I had no idea. But it was through my own growth and through my own experiences, and that's what makes me the expert because I will only talk about what I know. Mm -hmm. And if I don't know, I'll, I'll find you somebody. That's the XPI in me. I'll find somebody for you because I still love to learn. You still love to learn. It's and a journey. It, it is. And we just keep going. Working on wellness. That's yeah, right. That's and our sex drive, that our sexual fantasies, and yeah, it's an amazing healing aspect of our life. We're sexual beings. We are. We, we that's how we got here, and we don't honor that. 
I didn't. And, now I do. And you have to give yourself permission to that's the say key word. it's okay. That's the key word. And that's what I realized. When people come to me, basically what I feel is I sell permission. I give you permission to be real. I give you permission to be a sexual being. And literally, they just transform. And I didn't really do anything. I just, I'm just there. You just, and it just happens. You just, you just, let's figure it out. The name of your uh, radio show. The name show. of my radio show. So where can people find you on, uh, on that? VoiceAmerica.com. Okay. It is on the internet. I did start out on community radio. I was there for a year. And my most popular shows were anything to do with sexual health. Okay. And my friend said to me, Tammy, go big. And so now, on the internet, the beauty of it is, you control it, you own it, and mm -hmm. you can talk about whatever you want. And so I have a huge following now. I've been there for two years. Now I've switched to evening, so it's 6 p.m. Eastern time on voiceamerica.com, and it's called Let's Figure It Out Intimately. And it is for entrepreneurs. I find that my, my clientele really are holistic people, new agers, mm -hmm. healers, that kind of stuff. But when you want to become an entrepreneur, we go through struggles. And you know, there's different things that come up in blocks. And so as a healer, it's easy for me to listen to them because I am that problem solver. Right. And it's also very similar to what's happening in our personal relationships. And so whatever issue we're dealing with in business, I guarantee you Translates. It's, it's in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it's simultaneous. So it's easier to sell, I find, because I'm not a sex expert. Mm -hmm. So what I found was I can help you in your business first and your sex life's gonna change as well. I absolutely guarantee it. So you're a facilitator. Yeah, yeah. Like a teacher, that. yeah, a teacher. a teacher. I help people, I'm a problem solver, so I help them, I guide them, but I teach based on my life. Okay. I don't tell anything I don't know. I don't pretend, you don't I'm pretend. real, mm -hmm. it's me. You're either gonna love me or you will hate me okay. because I'm so real that it scares people. It doesn't scare sense. me. No, because you understand. I understand. But to some other people, it's not a comfortable place. It's not a comfortable place. Yeah. So, yeah. Do men and women have the same type of sexual fantasies? Not at all? No. The fantasies might be the same, but based on what people have told me, and I am writing a book, I'm actually writing two books right now. One is my personal stories, my transformation. The other one is about sexual fantasy exploration. I'm focusing on men for my first book mm -hmm. because I found in dating that as I was growing and changing that a lot of men were telling me stuff about their life, their fantasies. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like men don't have a voice. There's so much work for women. And so in my transformation and working through my stuff, men were sharing things with me that they had never told a soul. And I thought, wow, women need to learn this. Women need to listen because it's not just women mm -hmm. who are dealing with issues of abuse and relationships and mental, emotional abuse, so do men. Okay. And they don't have a big of enough voice. Okay. And what I found was that women in general, mm -hmm. and this is only based on my experience, women do not feel they are sexy enough, and men do not feel that they are good enough, and that is the core issue of what it always boils down to. So it's both, it, it's a feeling of just inadequacy on both ends. Exactly. Okay. Right? And right. in the core issues of the fantasies. And so I help them work through that. Okay. And where again pe can people find you, Tamron? On my website, mm -hmm. best place, everything's on my website. So it's tamaronsplace.com. Okay. It's that simple. I have a fantasy that I'd like to chat with you about, maybe off camera, if that's okay. Absolutely. I got and I bet you have more than one. Day, and uh, I might use them. So, all right. At my workshop. That was awkward. Okay. <laughs> I get it. But liberating. Thank you. Tamron, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. And, Thank uh, you. And I really applaud you for what you're doing in the community, helping a lot of people get through some it's going to be a lot of fun getting unstuck exactly yeah. and having fun and having fun yeah yeah, definitely. yeah. Right.